this tutorial where we will walk through the basis on how to operate this kind of machine, which is an FDM printing machine. Basically what we will need is a, obviously a 3D printer and a computer with our model and a slice and software. So the first thing we need to do is um, translate our model into machine language. And for that, we'll use a, what is called a, a slicer software. In this case, we're going to use Ultimaker Cura, which is a fairly easy, easy to use and um, intuitive program. And um, we, we're going to go through the basis on how to use it. The first thing, and probably the most important one, is to choose correctly the, the printer. Here I have two configurable printers and uh, today we're going to use the Creality Ender 3. So we're going to choose this one and, and this allows us to, to have the right size of the bed and also under our configuration. And here we do have the, the options and, and we can choose uh, whether we want a super quality uh, print or, or a low quality or different, different qualities. We're going to go with the standard, which is the most used one. And, and here we can see that there are like tons of options. We're going to go through the most used ones, which is basically the quality. Uh, this is the layer height. And, and this one establishes the quality of the, of the, of the print. If we, if we use a smaller layer, layer height, uh, we'll get better, better quality. And if we go with um, like higher uh, layers, the quality will be a little bit um, worse. Uh, we're gonna go with the standard here, so we, we're not touching anything. Uh, also, an important one here is infill. Infill is the amount of material that uh, the, the print is going to have inside. In this case, it's not really necessary because we, we're not printing a solid object. It is a base, so there is not any part that's solid. But usually, uh, you'll go from 10 to 20 percent. Uh, infill works in percentage. So yeah, uh, 20 should be okay for a, a standard quality. Also, uh, another important uh, parameter is the speed. The speed is the, the speed that the machine is going to print. Um, we can go up to 60, 60% 60 is, is okay, but we cannot or we, we don't recommend a printer printing in, in, in higher speed because the machine is going to vibrate and probably the material is not going to stick well. So 60 should be a, a good value here. And finally, we'll have uh, the last important uh, parameter is um, the, when you are printing something that, that has um, like difficult geometries, sometimes you need uh, to build a bridge underneath so the cantilever um, is printable because as the machine prints from top uh, from bottom to top if you have a, in your geometry you have a cantilever and um, it won't it, it won't stick so if for example we rotate this way now we do have like big cantilevers the red part shows you the, the part of the geometry that's in cantilever. This would not print because this part would, will definitely fall inside the, the model. So there is a, the option of generating support and then something, the machine will do a geometry inside that is, it doesn't have as, as much plastic as the rest and it doesn't have the same quality and uh, basically it is ready for you to, to retrieve it when the print is done. Um, and we can click slice. slice. This is the bottom when we tell the, the software that it should start doing the calculation. And if we click slice in this moment, we'll, we'll be able to see the, the support. In this case, we are not really gonna use it, so we'll change this, this object to its original position right away. But this way we can see the supports. Well, this is the, the support material, which, well, we can see it's a lot of it and it's definitely gonna be really hard to take it out. 
Anyway, this is not what uh, we're gonna print today. We're gonna just print regular base, so we're not gonna use supports. So in this case, we're not gonna click uh, anything in the support area. We're gonna click slice here, and as we have just seen, uh, what the software does is it gives you an approximately uh, amount of time that's gonna take, and also it gives you an amount of material. This is very important because if we have uh, fil if we don't have enough filament charge in the machine, our print might might get uh, might stop at half, and it's 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 a pity that if it was printing well that we don't we don't see our model finish uh, because we didn't charge enough filament. So it is interesting to to check the amount, and here we can see in the preview uh, part how the machine is going to work, and we can go through the different layers that's uh, gonna work. So the machine will start making the base, the, the bottom of the base, and then uh, it will go uh, up layer by layer till, the, till the, the object is completely print. So now we have here, it has appeared the option save to disk, and what we will need is a way to transfer this information into our machine. In this case, we're gonna use our printer has a SD a card, and now the option Save to Removable Drive has a beer. We can click here, and it is interesting that we check the name that Kura has given to our model. It is gonna be called CE3 uh, Base 01. So when we load it into machine, we know which one is. Afterwards, we'll just slice in the card. And now our, our model is loaded into the machine. First thing we, we have to check is the filament. Uh, this is a um, filament spool. And um, this is PLA, which is one of the easier to print and, and most common filament. And here, as we can see, it is a filament that's almost uh, empty, almost over. This is important to check uh, before we, we start with our printing, because uh, as I told you before, there is like this uh, risk that you start printing your piece and the filament, you run out of filament uh, while the print is gone, and then you would probably end up with a ruined piece. When we keep filament, also it's very important that we can see here we have two holes in, in the spool. Uh, when we take it out and, and keep it to store it, it is very important that we pass through it the, the edge of it, the, the end. So this way uh, we make sure that the, that the filament doesn't tangle because if it gets tangled, it, you might end up with a ruined uh, spool. And in this case, there's not much left, but uh, this could happen also with a brand new uh, filament. And then we would have a totally unable to use filament there. So first thing uh, we're gonna do is go through the to the process on how to, to change the filament. In this case, we can see that uh, the, the filament is almost full, so we wouldn't really need to, to change it. But anyway, we are gonna go through the process. And the first thing, we have to preheat the nozzle, the, the part that, that heats the filament, because if we try to take it out right now, we'll probably just break the filament someplace around here, and we'll get this stuck. So first we have to heat all the filament that's in this area here so we can take it out smoothly. And for do that, we go to prepare and we click preheat PLA. Now we can hear that the machine is doing something, so like it's starting to, to work. In this case, um, we can see here it's preheating not only the, the nozzle, but also the bed. We'll have to press here and just remove it. We can see it's very easy. We can, if we come here close, we can see that the end of it, it's kind of melted. That's because it was on the hot end. So if we want to change it, we just cut it out. We would have to do as I told you before. We put it through here and then we could storage it. So I'm going to recharge this one because it's brand new. And 
basically we'll just have to do the same process we just have done but in reverse so we will have to press here and put the filament through the tube until we can see that when we press, there is some plastic coming out from the nozzle. The next step would be to make sure that the bed is level. If the bed is really low, your first layer won't stick to it. And if it's really high, it might get destroyed from, from the nozzle. To start this process, we'll also go to the prepare in, in, the, in the machine menu. And we'll start with the auto home. This uh, will send the, the machine, the, the head of the machine will go to 000, zero, zero uh, coordinates. So we'll go to the origin of the reference system. And then what we will do is disable the steppers motor so we can move it freely. If we try to do it right now, what happens is that we cannot move it because the motors are doing tension, so they are working, so I cannot move it. And if I want to move it, I have to go again to prepare and disable steppers. Now, I'm able to move this freely and this allows me to move the hot end, the nozzle, around uh, along the, um, the whole surface of the bed. Uh, for leveling the bed, we'll use a piece of paper uh, because it has, I think it's, I'm not really sure, it, it might be one millimeter thick and it's more or less uh, the distance we desire to have the, um, the nozzle over the bed. So what we are searching for is to, to have pressure, but not much pressure. I mean, we have to be able to move it, but we have to feel as well some pressure from the, from the nozzle. In this case, there is no pressure at all. I don't feel it. So what I will be doing is moving these wheels here. We have one on each corner of the bed and it levels uh, one of the corners uh, at a time. So first thing you do is you check four corners. There we go. We do this with the four corners. And then we also check the middle, which is where our print usually will go. And here we can see that we have the desired pressure here. So now we have the bed leveled and we're ready to print. Uh, we can see there are only two, two files here and we're gonna choose the one that we have done, which is this one and we just press and here uh, we can see that it's printing our file. Um, the first thing the machine is gonna do is uh, make sure that the, the temperature is up to, to what we have set on the slicer. We can see it's starting to pull out the filament. We right now can see that it's very optimistic. I think we, we can leave it working. Uh, it is good, also good advice to check from time to time just to make sure that the printer is going as it should be. And basically the printer is not doing its job and, and we can just go keep making.